You're nobody till somebody loves you. Spread the news like mayonnaise on toast. Gary, I have a mission for you. Mark Roman Empire, also a podcast, episode 23, dated the 11th of March, 2020. Yeah, I'm dropping it to you guys a few days late here. Audio issues. I thought I had microphones I could use. They're pretty cool, but apparently I had the wrong the wrong wires. <laughs> Go... Go figure. I told you guys I'm not an audio engineer, okay? So we're going to figure this out. Uh, Believe it or not, you're listening to me uh, off the microphone on an old iPhone 6 Plus. (laughs) Yeah, I've apparently been using props. In fact, uh, the interview we did this week, uh, we had a microphone. I think that was just this elaborate prop because apparently uh, I went and talked to the sound folks at the local sound place here in my neighborhood. And uh, yeah, well, it's going to get better, guys. I promise. All right. The empire is evolving brick by brick. Hang in there with me. You know, I mean, I think these days... We're all learning how to adapt. Am I right? Okay, show must go on. Speaking of the show, Melanie Newman is on the podcast. She's a Playboy bunny that I met in Vegas. Hey, hold on, hold on. Okay, it possibly sounds a lot more exciting than it actually is. Uh, But I'll let you be the judge. You listen to the interview. Uh, Melanie's actually an actor. She's a TMZ tours guide. And she's also, for the last year, been performing stand-up comedy. I actually got to go see her perform uh, as part of the D-Cups of Comedy at the Comedy Store earlier this week. Yeah, I went out. Screw the coronavirus. Well, I've been staying in the last few days, I got to be honest. You know, it's gotten crazy in the last week here, right? Wow. Wow. Anyway, back to Melanie. We'll talk about coronavirus here in a second. I just got to give you guys a heads up, all right? Like I said, audio issues, recording issues. I'm learning how to use GarageBand. It's going to get better, I promise, guys. But the first part, because of the way GarageBand is behaving with me or my understanding, I don't know. I'm not going to blame everything on GarageBand, but there was three parts of the interview that we recorded, Okay. Somehow I lost the first one. So all we got is two and three. Now, I think it's worth it. I talked to Melanie about it, and there was a lot of good stuff we covered in those last two, uh, last two, you know, parts. <laughs> so I think it's worth just throwing this out here to you guys, okay? I'm sorry. It's a little incomplete. It's, it is no way meeting my standards of perfection. Believe me. But... There's a lot of cool stuff here. I think it's worth just getting out to you. we got to keep getting these podcasts out out each week. I'm going to get better. All right. I mean, if Bill Burr can sit on the edge of his bed and whine and bitch and moan about crazy shit, uh, am I right? Okay. All right. I think you guys will get a couple cool things out of this. But Jesus, this coronavirus thing. Uh, of course, you guys probably want to escape that. I kind of feel like I want to escape that. Can we talk about anything but... I just, it's kind of amazing to me how people are worried about how they can get pallets of toilet paper and how to avoid, you know, not drinking Corona beer, but they never bother to clean their phone. Like, does, does that seem weird? That seems weird to me. I don't know. Clean your phone, guys. You know, if you've got an iPhone, I, I, Apple just admitted this week, you can use, you know, those, those wipes, those anti, you know, bacterial wipes. If they get like 72% alcohol, the, your, your iPhone's going to be safe. I mean, check with Apple, but that's the news story that I allegedly heard. So, you know, clean your phone. Figure out a way to clean your phone that's safe for your phone. Do it. I did it this week. I'm going to do it more than once, too. Wow, did Mark Marin time it well? Damn. 
his uh, newest special, End Times Fun, <laughs> right? Just dropped on Netflix. I've watched most of it, uh, as many of you probably know. Mark Maron's kind of like uh, uh, an older brother figure to me. He's very much an inspiration for this podcast. I've been listening to his since literally the last time we had a national global crisis, The Big Short, back in 2008. But man, he even references that the year he's recording is 2019 in the special. Uh, But it just, wow. Well-timed, Mark. Well done, you. Fantastic. And speaking of Netflix, Sammy Obeyed, my, uh, my fellow comic buddy from the San Francisco Bay Area. We interviewed him on episode five of the podcast way back in 2018. He's got uh, a new uh, show. Yeah, on Netflix. It just came out. It's called 100 Humans. And you got to check it out. I'm so happy for him. So proud of him. He also, uh, if you go check out his stuff, he posted... um, Uh, this article about all of the shit he had to go through to get to the point where his show, 100 Humans, that he's not only in, but he dreamed up everything about it. Um, It's his baby, and it it worked. But he went through hell to get there. And there were several steps where average humans would have probably given up, but not Sammy. So check that out. On the Netflix, go watch the old episode, uh, number five of the podcast, where I get to interview Sammy. Uh, in fact, I'm wearing his uh, Obeyed in 2036 shirt. He's running for president, that's right, but not until 2036. I'm wearing that shirt when I interview Melanie, uh, and you can see it actually in the YouTube video of the interview wrap. So check that out too. There's a cool, some cool new stuff in there that we're doing now with the podcast. Yeah, uh, it's pretty clear we've been cruising through 2020 with several questionable assumptions. Uh, this pandemic is definitely testing them. Uh, one could say our systems are maybe broken. In some cases. I don't think we even needed to have systems. That was our thinking. I mean, what could go wrong? This is America, right? Yeah, indeed. Well, I chose to start helping a friend and a former colleague a year ago. Uh, And a few months later, I realized my help wasn't enough. So I decided to Eagle Scout up. And here at your org... That's a word I created several years ago. It found new life. The motto, we got a new one now, leave no human outside. The mission, bring home Vanka and Will. Yes, they're homeless, and yes, it's been more than a year that they've been homeless. But since December, I've found 34 hero tiers. So at this point, we're looking for 2,966 more as of this recording. Uh, Venka is homeless. Um, There's actually a recent YouTube video she recorded about a week ago about her uh, recent eye aneurysm. And you can find that on the Venka page at herotier.org. I just created a new help page literally today. Um... A lot of cool information on there. Uh, Not just uh, financial. There's also a lot of other things uh, that current Hero Tears might want to check in if you'd like to do something beyond just um, financial help and relief for Vanga. And she can definitely use that. Uh, There's a Discover section, a Financial section, Donate Special Skills, Donate Expertise, Artist Donate Swag, and Sponsor Artist Swag. Options and sections. That's the uh, the help page at herotier.org. Uh, financially, there's actually three ways that uh, they can be helped. There's the Hero Tier model that I've created. There's also her GoFundMe, uh, which wasn't getting a lot of traction until we started Hero Tier. Um, and Vank has actually credited some of the Hero Tier uh, um, donations that's received to uh, honor, honor GoFundMe. The third thing is you can directly give to Venka, and I got links for you to do that. Now, 
you might want to look into that and think about that because every one, each one of those three ways to financially help Vanka uh, helps to get more help for her. I mean, the clear, obvious one is direct financial aid. If I had the resources, that would be like one transaction, one Venmo, boom, Venka is no longer homeless, Will's no longer homeless, Andy, their dog's no longer homeless. Uh, I'm a not quite middle class working artist, so I'm not in a position to do that. And apparently the people that Vank has known through her her um, uh, connections, uh, they don't have that either. So the bottom line is we got to find more people. Uh, and if each person does a little, uh, it's going to actually uh, bring uh, Vanka and Will home. So that's why her GoFundMe is important, and that's why Hero Tear is important too. Um, you're listening to this right now on this podcast, you know, maybe share this podcast with a friend. Other people are listening to it. So that's how we get the, get the word out. I also created a cool new game, which if you saw the, uh, the YouTube interview wrap with Melanie, uh, you saw the first uh, edition of Cards for Hero Tears, a new game we're doing. Uh, there's a winner drawn uh, each week. This uh, week, the winner was Hero Tier number 20, who is anonymous, which you can be as a hero tier, uh, but they won a autographed Lieutenant Frank headshot, um, and they might actually donate it. So we'll see. I'm still going back and forth with them to see what they want to do. But uh, you, you could win some cool stuff. I was talking to Melanie. You know, she might drag out a bikini, uh, you know, photo and autograph it and throw it into the mix. I, I don't know. I got other artists I'm talking to. I just talked to um, someone who has a podcast who I've been on their podcast, and they got some cool uh, comedy videos that they, they worked on that production. They might get those out, and uh, that'll be in the mix, too, for... Uh, cards for Hero Tears. Anyway, talking about Melanie, uh, let's let's just jump in. Can we do that? To the interview that I had this week with Melanie Newman with our <laughs> microphone props. <laughs> oh boy, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool, even without the first part. I think you're going to get where she's coming from. Uh, we covered a lot of cool stuff. A lot of stuff we haven't covered. I'm going to definitely have to bring her back. But check out what we got here so far. And I'll hand it off to you. What do you say, Melanie? Uh, the thing, the way people perceive me, I think it's, it can be frustrating because I feel like people will see, you know, they're just looking at what I am on the outside and they automatically right. are like, you must be this type of person. And then I experience Judgments. people. Yeah. yeah. And then I see them getting angry with me when they find out I'm not the person that they oh, had really? imagined. Because yes. you're, you're, uh, you're not matching their expectations yeah. solely on your appearance before they yes. actually bother to get to know you. Yeah. As a human being. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I can give some specifics. Like what, uh, like what What do people seem to perceive and then what? how is that different from... Uh, well, I, I feel like there's, the, you know, the whole thing, like, it's, you know, for example, let's just do online dating. Mm -hmm. Say I put, I put my pictures on an online dating site. Right. And a man is going to look at those images and not read the profile. They're just going to look at those images and say... Oh, I'm a guy. Uh, I've done that. Okay. I've done that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they send, you know, you send a message and, and, and then, you know, maybe you go out on a date and then this guy's finding out about you and they're like, wait a second, you're not what I thought. You're like, remember in my profile where I said, da 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 Yeah. Who, what, what profile? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, you didn't wow. read, you didn't read the profile. Um, but when it comes to, you know, being in Hollywood and in this industry, it is what it is. I can't be upset about it. Yeah. You know, I, I'll just take it like, okay, I'm getting called in for this audition because I look the part. Now I can just become the part. Right. Yeah. So. What do you find when you get audition? What What are they? What um. Looking for? It's crazy. I I'm not getting a lot of auditions right now, to be honest. But. Um, when you do, when you do. Um. I have gone at like the, you know, girl next door and I've sure. also gotten the bad girl before too. 
Oh, really? So I do have separate headshots so that I can. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. That you because that's that covers a lot of ground mm-hmm. of potential roles. Yeah, and then the most recent one that I've been getting is you know mom mom stuff. Sure. So I don't mind it. You know that is you know. That, that covers a lot of ground. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So, there you go. Right on. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's the process? Because, like, what what exactly is a Playboy Playmate? Okay. A Playboy Playmate is the centerfold. So it is the centerfold. Okay. Yeah. Right. You open up. You get to the middle of the magazine. Boom. There there she is. Um, and there's also an, you know, an article, an interview with her. That's the Playboy Playmate once a month. Um, I, I'm asking you like I don't know. Oh. Like I have owned Playboy magazines. <laughs> I've looked at them. I've even read the articles. I feel like there's some under my bed uh, right now. But there <laughs> actually aren't. I haven't. I can't remember the last time I picked up a Playboy magazine. It's well, literally probably been over a decade. Well, now a lot of it is online <laughs> now. Well, there's that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically I was online, it was called the Playboy Cyber Club in 2007. Okay. So I was put on the Playboy Cyber Club and it was kind of like a mini Playboy Playmate, I would say, because you, you know, I, I had an interview on there and, um, there were pictures of me and then, uh. You know, when I moved out to L.A. and I kept... Oh, I also followed the casting call tour. So... If the casting call tour. They have like a... I, I guess it might have not been a tour. I don't know what they called it, but they, they do... Around. Yeah, they do casting calls in different cities. And so I was like, I can go to this one. I can, oh, gotcha. you know... Gotcha. Um, Stack the deck. Yeah. And so I was just traveling to different casting calls, hoping that eventually they would pick me as Playmate. Gotcha. Um... In 2012, I did do two bigger pictorials for, okay. the, for their website, which was um, what they call playboyplus.com, which is still there today. Right. Um, so I have two different pictorials on there. Um, and then... Congratulations. Thank you. I was very excited about that. Because that was your dream and you mm-hmm. accomplished it. Right. Yeah. Um, so technically, I'm a Playboy bunny. I am not a Playboy playmate. Okay, so yeah. what's the difference between a bunny and a playmate? So a bunny is just basically anybody who's posed for Playboy. Gotcha. Or maybe you were a waitress in one of the Playboy clubs. Those are bunnies. See, that was too. in my mind. Yeah. I'm thinking like the, because uh, they, they literally have like a Playboy club. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think they have that anymore, but like they have that in Chicago. Yeah. I think they had one in New York too. They had one in Vegas. Okay. I got a fun story. The, when they opened up the one in Vegas, I was like, I want to go. I want to check this <laughs> club out. I just walked up to the front. I, there was an, you know, you had to pay an entry fee. Sure. And I was like, I, I'm a Playboy model. And they just looked right. me up and yeah. let me in. That's awesome. So I was like, this is great. How'd you feel when great. that happened? Oh, I felt like a celebrity. Because you were. Great. You were. Yeah. You're yeah. like, you're at the place. I'm like, I'm one of the people of this place. Yeah. You know? I, I posed multiple times. And they times. looked it up. They verified yes. it. Yes. And they're awesome. like, go ahead. You're, you're okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That was cool. Very cool. Feel very good cool. moments. Um, so, what led you to uh, TMZ? Ah, because you do know Harvey, and we should clarify because mm-hmm. Harvey Weinstein just got twenty five years. Yeah. So yeah, um, it's a little unfortunate because mm-hmm. I remember my Lieutenant Frank would yell at the TMZ tour buses, uh, say hi to Harvey for me, and I don't know <laughs> how that would be taken now. Well, when we say Harvey, knows. what Harvey are we talking We're about? We're talking here? about Harvey Levin from the People's Court. Esther agrees. Yeah. Esther's She's like, like that's, talk, it's that's very not... important that we clarify which Harvey we're talking She's about. like, my here. mom's boss is not Harvey <laughs> Weinstein. Good looking out, Esther. <laughs> you, you make sure mommy represents correctly here, is representing correctly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and any other thoughts, Esther? She just now she 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 rubbed the microphone. So. Yeah. Um. So basically, yeah, two different Harveys, and you would like everybody knows the difference. I would say people on the TMZ bus. Would well, know. now that we yeah, yeah yeah yeah, but I mean when you just say the you used to be when you say the word Harvey, like I don't know maybe people think of uh, you know the Casper the friendly ghost and uh, It's a Wonderful Life with uh-huh. Jimmy Stewart. Maybe people think of Harvey Levitt with TMZ, but I yeah I. It's. It feels like you know, since me too, you can't even right. 
you can't even remember what other Harveys there were. Because now, yeah. when you say Harvey, everyone's brain goes to this one. Right. You know, nasty dude who's who's got yeah. twenty five just for that, and yeah. now he's got to get tried in L. A. So yeah, oh he's done. He's done. Yeah. Oh man. Since we're on that topic, and then we'll get into TMZ, but like, yeah. how what what is it? Um, how does it feel to you mm-hmm. to be in this moment of our culture of mm-hmm. Me Too, right? Um, as a Playboy bunny and an actor and a and a comic who you know mm-hmm. is telling very personal stories, yeah, on stage, right? To make strangers who are drinking alcohol laugh, like how how does that? How do you feel? I honestly don't even think about it that way. So well, why do you think about it? I mean, I'm just telling my story. And I've never had one of those situations, like the whole Me Too situation, I've never experienced any of that. Really? So it hasn't happened for me. Like, nobody said to me, if you do this or right. you have to do this, you right. know, like that's, I, I never experienced that. It was, you know, just something I wanted and I did, I did it on my own. I was never harassed sexually or anything. Do you think maybe you, you navigated away from potential situations just because, I don't know, because there's, uh, there's different schools of thought. Mm-hmm. You know, there's people that like, defend Harvey and they, their argument is, well, if you put yourself in certain situations, it's kind of like shame on you, which, yeah. you know, it's like, how do men not have agency? Like, they're responsible for what they do and... You know, right. Because, you know, someone mm-hmm. looks a certain way, that mm-hmm. doesn't give other people, you know, entitlement or rights. Right. You know. Yeah. So what do... Uh, I don't know. Because, I mean, if it happened, I'm glad that these, you know, well, you know, it, it has happened. Because you do have a strong yeah. personality. hmm So my sense is perhaps there's people that might want to have suggest something or say something and they think... I yeah. think if I said that to Melanie, I'm going to get into hot water. Yeah. Whereas there's other people who have personalities that are, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a really complex, messy conversation to have. But yeah. I think it's important that we have it because, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, yeah. It's if, shitty what happens to a lot of people. And it's right. like, how can we make our world a slightly better place? So yeah. I feel like it helps if we right. talk about it. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, totally. I think it needs to be talked about. And I do think, you know, I, I, you know, just basically if, if something like that were to happen or if a guy tries to make a move on me and I'm not interested, you know, Mm -hmm. just push him away. No, that's not what I want. The answer is no. Yeah. And I mean, I have said no to men before and I haven't had, okay, you know, been respectful about it. Okay. We won't go there. So... That's awesome, because I hear stories from so many women. (laughs) And then the men are super pushy, and I guess I'm very lucky that I haven't had anybody, you know, be pushy. Yeah. I'm from Detroit, so... (laughs) There's that, too. I'm a badass. Yeah. There was... You literally quoted, so not to reveal too much of your act, but... Which I was really happy about, because I I dig Eminem. Yeah. Um, And and in a little bit, it's possibly because of my decade in Michigan, but... uh, Oh, right. Yeah, Yeah. it's... uh, it, do you notice a difference? You think being a Detroit girl, you're, you're like a, a, a little, I don't know, I don't want to say tougher, but like you have a strong sense of yourself that maybe people who grew up in other places, you know. I you, totally have street smarts, you know, like that. Okay. And what does that mean to you? What does street smarts mean to you? It's just kind of, you know, I'm always, you know, you know what's around you. And, mm. and a lot of, when I was growing up, I was taught to just, Go where you're going. Don't make eye, eye contact. Just okay. walk and go and don't say anything. Um, and I still do that today. Right. Even, you know, go, you know, especially going to work on Hollywood Boulevard and like, you know. Right. The cesspool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you just, I just, you know, keep walking and then just, just know. I don't know if it makes any sense, but yeah. Yeah. I think it does a little bit. Yeah. Or I'm just, you know. Yeah, sometimes I could be sweet, too. Like, I'll be nice if, you know, somebody's, you know, wants to hold open a door or whatever, you know, and they're being nice. You can tell. There's a difference. Right. But just always being on guard, protecting Mm. myself. Yeah. 
It's an interesting conversation, I think, as I, I remember um, a relationship I had that was it was pretty serious and long term. Um, and she had actually suffered some abuse in her childhood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she made some decisions. And she has a very strong personality. But uh, she would always tell me every room she ever goes into, she's immediately aware of where all the exits are. Uh-huh. So, That's like, smart. literally the minute she walks into a room, she can immediately tell you how many. And she already knows how to access each and every one. And it's like she's got them ranked. But that's because, you know, she had suffered some pretty significant assault okay. trauma. And yeah. So, she, yeah, and, and her response was, you know, um, this is my kingdom and I'm running it because I'm the queen. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> Which, on the one yeah. hand, I respected, but on the other hand, you know, we're right. no longer together because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm building an empire, so. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> Which I'll probably <laughs> remain alone, and I'm okay with that. But, yeah, it's, but it's, it's an interesting thought process because as a guy, I mean, I'm six foot, mm -hmm. you know, on a good day, not quite 200 pounds, you know, trying to get my six pack. I got a one pack. But, you know, I'm, you know if I was shorter, if I was a little less weight, mm -hmm. and, you know, I got to be honest, if I wasn't male, I... I I feel like I would have a much different sense of myself and my own safety just going out in the world. Yeah. Because, yeah, like living here in L.A., you know, there's so many times like at night or, you know, walking different streets because mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a car. So, I'll, you know, I'll use, you know, uh, ride share, public transit. But a lot yeah. of times, like, I, I just I love walking. I love hiking, running, mm -hmm. uh, running to the gym. But I just I love walking around. And I, uh, I think I really dig spending some time in New York. But. You know, yeah. Uh, like if I was in your frame, because mm -hmm. you're definitely not two hundred pounds. Yeah. And you're like what five six? Five six. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I would have a very different sense of uh, the physical calculus. Yeah. You know, you know, and realizing, all right, if a situation popped up, uh -huh. you know, I'm not going to be able to fight my way out of right. this. Right. So, like, does that? How much do you think about that, or how much is that? I guess I, you know, yeah, I I do think about it, but at the you know what 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 I, what I was just thinking about is that I always you know make sure that you're around other people, that you're mm. not alone by yourself. See, as a guy, mm -hmm. it, that's not even in my my thinking. Okay, yeah, because that's that's something I was thinking about. Like, yeah, I'm walking from down. time to time. I'll think about it, but it's not like a constant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like Where make are the sure, other people? Yeah, there's witnesses. You know, wherever you go, there's a witness. Or you, And also, yeah. another thing that I think is great today mm -hmm. is there's cameras everywhere. Yeah, you have right. the ring, the ring apps and, right. you know, it's like somebody's going to find that footage. Right. It's there. It's someplace. So, it's comforting for a woman. There's also, uh, you know, you got your, your circle of friends and, and people you know, if you're heading to an event do you like talk to other people and say hey, i'm doing this i'm doing that and mm -hmm. so if they don't hear from you they're like hey yeah. she was supposed to be yes okay yeah I have, that helps yeah i have a girlfriend too and you know so you know i'll tell her like hey i'm, I'm going to this right. um and these are the people that i'll be with and right she'll even you know have me send pictures of the people that i'm with so that's like a standard operating procedure yeah. as a pilot to say that mm -hmm. for you yes you go out like okay yeah, never go. Because again, anywhere. as a guy, like I rarely do that. Yeah. It didn't even occur to me mm -hmm. that I would need to do that. Yeah. So like Right. Um that's why I'm glad we're having this conversation because these are kind of details where yeah. if we don't flush it out, you know, you're right. just like, Well, I've never had, you know, Harvey Weinstein's situation happen and it's like, All right, well you're a Detroit girl who yeah. has, has learned to this? be street smart and you have <laughs> a lot of, you know, habits yeah. that that protect you. Mm-hmm. Um I, don't know, I think that's an important conversation to have. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. Um, but let's get back to good Harvey, Harvey Lovett at TMZ. Oh, yeah. Harvey Lovin, yep. So what, Lovin, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Harvey. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what drew you to a, a TMZ tours? Okay, so I was, uh, I was taking classes at the Groundlings. Oh, um, excellent. Yeah. And Which is originally from Chicago. Wait, is it? I thought it was. Yeah, isn't Groundlings and uh, UCB? They're from. Uh, I they're think both you, from you, Chicago. I have to Google that. 
I know. I think. I'm I know. Sure. I, I feel like Bill Murray was uh, um, was from Grand Lake, Chicago. It right now. Well, you have your phone right in your hand, so why not? All right, because I thought the Groundlings was here. UCB, I think, is New York. Well, they have a presence here, but like they they uh, started out of Chicago. Groundlings, maybe they have like a uh, what do you call uh, Wikipedia that would say that? Where's the Wikipedia? Yeah, and then Second website. City, which is n- literally named after you know uh, the name of Chicago. Based in LA. Oh, uh, it says it comes from the Del Close uh, stuff, which uh, came from members of Second City from Chicago. So it's derivative. Yeah. Of Chicago. It looks like, I feel yeah. like the derivation happened in Chicago. And now, guys, mm-hmm. if anyone who gets upset that <laughs> Melanie just looked up Wikipedia on her phone, I need you to stop, <gasps> take a breath, go Uh-oh. namaste, and then immediately... After you listen to this full podcast, go listen to almost any Bill Burr Monday morning podcast because he literally will sit there and make you, dear listener, wait as he looks something up on Wikipedia because oh, okay. he'll be the first to admit he ain't the smartest, you know, Crayola crayon in the box. It's so. impossible to know everything. Right? That's why we all have to work together in this world. <laughs> I think it was Henry Ford who said the secret to his success was surrounding himself by a ton of people that were a lot smarter than he was. Yeah. Could be mistaken. That might be just anecdotal, but... Let's Google it. <laughs> Let's save it for the next podcast. All right. Because I want to hear more about, like, what... TMZ. Which are you to... Yeah, TMZ okay. Tours. So there was a, um... Uh, they have a, um... A bulletin board. On the first floor of the Groundlings School. And okay. I always... Here in L.A. Yes. Yeah. And so I would always look at that bulletin board. And then one day I saw a flyer that said TMZ is looking for tour guides. And I took a picture of it on my phone. Right. And I thought maybe maybe I'll apply for this. I think I could be a great tour guide. And sure. TMZ. And other uh, another thing is that... When TMZ, the TV show, first started, I remember watching it all the time, and I thought, I would be perfect on that show. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, I would be so perfect. When I saw that, I was like, maybe. But, it's you know, at first I thought, this is the tour. This is right. not the TV show. Is this um, really what I want? Yeah. And then I sat on it for a couple of days, and then I decided just... Because you want to be on the TV show. Yeah. Okay. And so I... Um, I ended up emailing them and sending them my resume, um, and I heard back, it was like 15 minutes later after I sent the email, um, and it was by phone. I got a phone call, okay. and they were asking me to come in for an interview, and so I went in to the TMZ Tour Center and did an interview, and then I did uh, two weeks of tour guide training, which is like Survivor, by the way. My training group started with 10 people. I think your TMZ is probably the only, maybe second uh, to the other Starline. Yeah. Or they used to be Starline. Starline's not mm-hmm. separate now. Yeah. Because um, outside of Starline and TMZ, it seems like all the tour bus companies, like, there is no train. No. It's literally, what can you improv in your head right now? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Katy Perry lives there and Justin Bieber lives over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> And Taylor Swift lives up on that hill, and, you know, it's going to be a different story tomorrow, you know? Tomorrow, Vin Diesel lives in the house that Taylor Swift lived in yesterday. Because I took my son on the TMZ tour, and this is like maybe 10 years ago. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. I've been on some other tours, and they were different. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So you had two weeks of training. What did that training consist of? The, uh, Without sharing any, you know, trade secrets or yeah. anything. Yeah. The training started with, they gave me a script. I had to memorize the script word for word. It is a two-hour script. Mm. Um, and then the training started with making sure you actually memorize the script, quizzing you on different parts of it. And then we have, um, the tour is backed by video, so we had to learn... Uh, how to use the tablet and their video system and what to do if it goes down. Um, you know, just all those little details. How much time do they spend on, like, the actual 
the the facts that you share with the tourists of like okay this is um well that was pretty much the facts we had to learn on our own and we were given four days to do it and then they test you and then they test you and then eventually the the final week is you're actually on a bus and you are giving the tour and get you it's crazy you get interrupted if you say anything that's wrong you get stopped (laughs) until you do it right um that makes sense they got a very specific brand they want you to represent that to Mm -hmm. a team yeah and everything that we say is like it's it's all from a script sure it's all yeah so uh, it's a brand yeah and some people are a news organization so Mm -hmm. i think it's you know extra important to them that you know and speaking of that, the tour changes every day because it has to be current with what's going on in the right. news. So like, even today... What's I, that like? <laughs> yeah, I, I got a, a new page emailed to me this morning. So they just added a new part. So you get like talking tour. points of like the latest mm-hmm. stuff? Yeah. If something new pops up or a new story, I get a page, you know, something comes in that I have to I guess it's, it's okay. So it's not talking points. It's literally a script, it's like a word script. by word. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you got a new script today. Yes. It's just a page about a new part that was added to the tour. Oh, wow. Yeah. Can you share that? I mean, this is it'll be probably not, uh, not I, relevant when yeah, we drop uh, the podcast. Here. I mean, it, I think it will be because okay. there was a Rocky and Bullwinkle statue on Sunset Boulevard f- since, I think it was 1961 until 2013. Of course there was, yeah. And then they removed <laughs> it, and now they just put it back. Nice. So now we're talking about Rocky and Bullwinkle on the TMZ tour. <laughs> Trouble time. That, that makes you feel good. That, right. I, I, yeah, thank you, Melanie. I, I'm I glad, need to know that today. I'm glad I could cheer you up. And thank you, Harvey Levin at TMZ. Yes. For making this possible for it, all of us. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta, be, I gotta be honest. I don't think I anticipated ever saying that. <laughs> 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 but here we are. Uh, it's on the podcast. Now it is. So we mentioned uh, you did um, I.O. West and you did Playhouse West. That was here in L.A., right? Yes. Actor training. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what have you done? Um, what have I done? Well, I took classes there. I started at Playhouse West when I first moved mm-hmm. uh, out here. I actually chose to move to North Hollywood because that is where Playhouse West is. Oh, Okay. And that's interesting, but it was close to where the school was, so that's, you know... Gotcha. Yeah, so I made that, and I, and I think that is important, that you need to live close to where you work and where you're spending Oh, absolutely, time. yeah. So the traffic out here is crazy. Definitely. Um, I.O. West, I started doing improv at Playhouse West. They started a program there, and I started that, I think it was in... 2010 or 2011 mm-hmm. and then uh from there i went on to doing improv at io west okay uh until there's the school closed down school oh, closed no. down in oh gosh when did they it was in 2017 maybe really yeah ios closed their doors they couldn't pay the rent anymore oh no yeah um I and then remember that. yeah and, yeah they had the spot on highway boulevard yeah, right on Hollywood, Bo- perfect location. Yeah, I think it's like a block or so from, I was a Beetlejuice for Hot Second yes. one night at uh, the uh, Beetle House, which yes. I think has since moved to a d- new location. Yeah, I went there at once. That was a cool bar, but wherever it is now, it's doing its thing. I think it's near yeah. the uh, the Pretty Woman Motel on uh, whatever street Oh, yeah, is. Beverly, the Beverly Wilshire on Wilshire Boulevard. The other... <laughs> Wait, the other pretty, pretty woman? woman? That's okay. That's the glamorous Rodeo Drive yeah. hotel. But there's the one that it was uh, where she, uh, she lived oh, in the film. Oh, yeah. And Richard Gere like climbs up the trellis mm-hmm. to get to Julia Roberts. Okay, yes. Okay, that's an actual CD hotel. Uh, oh. That's like a, literally a block off of Hollywood Boulevard. I can't think of oh, its name to save my life. It's literally a few blocks away from where I live. Oh. Like, I, I walk past it all the time. Yeah. But. You'll yeah. remember after the podcast. Of course. <laughs> so I'm a man of a certain age. Uh, but uh, you've not only been going to classes, but according to your IMDb, uh-huh. uh, you are known for Broken English yes. uh, from 2016, Deadly Sins from 2012, and The Mantle of 
Granny Bell from yes. 2014. Yes. So some things that I've done. I uh, okay. So bro- broken English is a sketch. Okay. Um, and so I play a I play the daughter of one of the main characters in it. It's it's the funny funny little bit. So I'm in a little part of that. Oh, cool. Um, it's a short. It's a short. Nice. Yeah, it's a short. Uh, and uh, also the mantle of belly. Uh, I can't even say it. Mantle of Granny Bell. That one was a lot of it's fun. Wordy. Yes, that one was a lot of. It sounds like a classic, movie. like high school theater type of production. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, I it was um. Which of course comes from like Broadway, you know, the best of the best. Yeah, of Broadway, so yeah, there was a. a I mean, to diminish it, you know. <laughs> right, great, great actors in that, um, and so I and who did I play? I was Julie in that one. Um, I could see you playing a Julie. Yeah? Yeah. I was a Julie. It's credible. I was a Julie. I'm trying to think who... Was I somebody's wife or girlfriend in it? I have to rewatch the whole thing myself. Um, gosh, that was, so, that was a long time ago. 2014. Well, now, what do you like better? Do you like acting or comedy? I like comedy. And I, I just saw it. you Monday. Yes. As we mentioned, at the yeah. belly room of the comedy store. Right. D Cups of Comedy. I was in the D Cups of Comedy. I So the thing is, is like I, I really want to be a comedic actress. That's my ultimate goal, to be a comedic actress. And so... Well, that's a good because path, because a lot of great comics, yeah. that, you know, I mean, even some not-so-great comics, it, mm-hmm. that goes right into the TV work. Right. I, I love sitcoms. Love Shit's Creek right now. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! No, I just got into it like <gasps> so a good. month ago. I want to mm-hmm. say so. I'm like I think it's season two now. But yeah, oh, yeah. oh my god, such and a good to show. To be honest, it was what was it? Was it the? It was the SAG Awards. Okay. It was the SAG Awards, mm-hmm. and eugene and, and the son it's mm. a fix it's a father son t- yeah. they were they did the cold open and it was fucking hilarious yeah it was just this absolute train wreck <laughs> and just the expressions of his son yeah. behind him and then i was just like oh i because i i was aware of Shit's creek and mm. it was on my list of things like i need to watch that but when i saw them at, at the SAG Awards, I was like, holy fuck, I missed the bus, seriously. Yeah. yeah. It is just, it's amazing. Yeah. Brilliant writing and just great, well cast, great chemistry. It's, yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah. I, yeah. So. Apparently we're promoting shit's Now we are. <laughs> but that's kind of the Because they earned it. Yeah. That's kind of what I want to do. Like, that's the type That'd of comedy that. That would be a lot of fun. That, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I started doing, sta- I haven't even been doing stand up for a year yet. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just like, just got into, it was in. This, this makes a lot of sense. Uh-huh. Why? Cause my, my set was terrible. <laughs> it was no. so bad. No, 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 <laughs> no. Um, but see here and I, and I say this enormous love and much respect. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but that makes a lot of sense. And I'm really glad you said that you uh-huh. want to be doing it for a year. Uh, I started doing stamp comedy 10 years ago. Oh, okay. And at the time, you know, the wise and wizened veterans would tell me, you know, it's going to take you about 8 to 10 years to even figure out what the fuck mm. your act is. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're right. Yeah. And now I haven't actually been doing traditional stand-up comedy these last several years Mm -hmm. but with what i've been doing with my lieutenant frank character which is very improv heavy um but there's like lines that recur and there's this whole you know Mm -hmm. it's it's an act that i've built over quite a few years and now i know that if i grab the microphone one on stage i got a completely different toolkit as a stand-up comic than what i had 10 years ago because what i saw with you was uh, incredible, strong stage presence. Oh. And and as strong, as strong as you can be, having only done stand-up comedy for a first year, mm-hmm. sense of yourself and sense of your act. And the material that you have, mm-hmm. it's deep, it's dark, it's personal. Mm-hmm. It, you make yourself very vulnerable. Um, you, It's like... Uh, I feel like you got your hands on some, uh, 
uh, just great material that you're gonna have to you're gonna have to develop it. Yeah. Because you gotta tease it out, and then right. the only way you can do that is by keep doing it. You have to fucking yeah. keep getting on stage. You, mm. you gotta you know have people boo you, deal with hecklers, have right. a bunch of people just sit there and stare at you in silence, and I you're know. like seriously, really? Yeah. You just laughed at that guy. He's an idiot. Like really, I'm burying my soul here. And and you're gonna it's through that excruciating you know process you're gonna find you know yeah the the right material for you that you can deliver because yeah. you've got a very unique voice and you also have an opportunity to play off of how people perceive you from your parents right which yeah uh, a lot of wonderful opportunities there so mm-hmm. I I think you got a really strong future end which i'm sorry it sounds really fucking patronizing and <laughs> just it's all good it. oh, but yeah. you had some funny stuff you had some stuff too that i i can see it being funny yeah it's just you know you have to go through that fucking process and right. it's a brutal fucking process mm-hmm. why a lot of people you know they quit stand-up comedy yeah because oh yeah but i don't you know you're from detroit I'm a badass You're Detroit. From Detroit. So <laughs> I don't see you shine away from the process. Yeah. You're like, bring it on. And yeah, and I know that I need to get keep going on stage. But and, you're at the fucking comedy how studio. How did that kidding? happen? I was yeah, that was, was pretty awesome. cool. I was like, hey, I'm doing a show at the comedy store. You know, I haven't even been doing this for I'll say a this, year. You held your own with the comics. There's some good comics there. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you were you were in a good spot. But, uh, yeah. And um, as someone who hasn't been on a stage in a long time, mm-hmm. I was like, uh, I was a little jealous. Like, I don't want to be on that stage. But you can do yeah. it. You can get on that stage. Yeah, there's, there's just some stuff I need to do. But all right, it's uh, but yeah, it's a thing. You just you have to be there. Yeah. Like, realistic, like the comics I know that I really hu- enormously respect. Mm-hmm. Like Sammy Abate, I'm wearing a shirt right here. Sammy Abate, thirty six. Like he just fucking got a you know he's a previous podcast guest. Uh, he just got a Netflix special. But wow. it's, uh, the road to that was fucking excruciating. Mm. And he literally wrote a blog with like bullet points of it. Yeah. And you're just like, holy shit. And there was like 17 levels of it where most people go, I'm done. Tap out. I'm. But Sammy just kept doing it. And mm-hmm. I've loved Sammy. He's just got a great voice. Um, but I just, I was really happy to see him. Yeah. Get that. That's but see, so he's good. been doing it. I think he started doing it a year before I did. Mm-hmm. And he's literally been doing, like, he set the world record 1,001 1, nights of comedy performed. Wow. Consecutive. What? Yeah. It's literally, wow. the only reason why it's not a Guinness World Record is because apparently you have to pay a licensing fee to Guinness. <laughs> it's like getting your star in the Hollywood Bowl Walk of Fame. <laughs> and Sammy's like, you know what? I'm good. I, I know I did the hundred, the thousand and one nights. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need to pay you to get your silly little decal or whatever. No. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just, I, you, you're, you're in a really, really strong position. So, and I'm, and I'm really happy to see you take that path because it's a difficult fucking path to be a stand-up comic. Yeah. I feel like you you mentioned like all the people dropping out. It was I've had those feelings too. Where I'm like, why? Well, of course you are. Like, why am I doing this? Like, the audience hated me. Why am that's I? Normal. That's normal. Yeah. That means that means it's working. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's part of the process. Yeah. So, but I'll get there. I'll have my Netflix special in ten years. It'll be great. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Thank you. You'll watch it. I got a viewer. I can't wait to yeah. see it. Yeah. Yeah. I came to your show. I came to tell. Thank you so much. I'm possibly the worst night to go out because Monday is where, and even though it seems like it's getting worse with each passing day, and when this episode drops, it'll probably be you know an epidemic instead of a pandemic. Who knows? But like so much news had hit with the stock market Mm -hmm. and and schools closing and all kinds of stuff. So it, it was really kind of the beginning of people going, "Oh fuck! I guess we're not going to the game or to the club or to." You know, anywhere that's out. It's and, awful. And and that morning, I knew because I had different things going on, and I wasn't entirely sure I'd be able to make it. Mm. But that morning, it was like, oh fuck no! I'm gonna go see Melanie perform live stand-up mm-hmm. comedy at the comedy store because the fucking universe is saying 
throwing some shit your way. Yeah. You really want to do that? I'm like, fuck yes, I do. Yes. Yep. I survived the Big Short. I survived Hillsdale College. I survived the Dick and Marilyn show. I can survive a Monday in this Corona, whatever the fuck it is. That's good. You know. I love it. I'm, I'm so glad that you were there. And I drank a Corona, too. You only had one Corona? Yeah. Well, all right. But you I drank a, you could a put Corona. A mask, a mask over yourself while drinking the Corona? That would have been horrible. <laughs> I got a Corona specifically like try to like help, you know. Nobody, nobody, and nobody, nobody noticed. took the bait. Nobody yeah, noticed. no one on stage should yeah. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. But yeah, it was a fun night. It was a fun night at the comedy store. But yeah, it's funny, on my way Yeah, you there, had a fun night, didn't you? I had a fun <laughs> night. I did my show, then I drank too much afterwards. And... You're the only comics <laughs> ever done that, yeah. Oh, we, yeah, I got home. I didn't get home until like 2 o'clock in the morning. But hey, I had a good night. That was awesome. <laughs> well, you earned it. Yeah, uh, absolutely earned it. So what's uh, coming next? You got something, uh, what's it, How yes, Comedy Club? Yes, uh, I'm going to try to get some shows before then because my, my next show that's booked is not until April 11th at Tao Comedy Studio. It's in Koreatown. Nice. Um, hopefully get some more before then, uh, but I'm just going to submit my material and see if I can get on another show. Right. So if anybody wants to stay informed, you can follow me on Instagram. That's where I pretty much post everything. Okay. So... Any website or anything like that? Don't have a website okay. yet. A lot of people, it seems like we, we all live in Instagram now. So. Everything's on Instagram, yeah. and that's you know pretty much the one that I use. I'm not on Twitter. Um, you might want to think about Twitter. There's, there's a lot of comics on Twitter, uh-huh. so it's kind of a cool networking yeah. thing. I connected with two or three comics just okay. from that night, Monday night, on uh, Twitter. On so. Twitter. Yeah. Something so. to think about. Yeah. Yeah. There's some people that are like, all right, Instagram's pictures, Twitter's for people who know how to read and write. Right. Like that. So you'll find like a lot of scientists, journalists, and a lot of like, you know, okay. more thinky comedians. But like, you know, um, not that Sarah Silverman's not a thinky comedian, but she's, mm-hmm. on, she's on Twitter. All right. Um, she's pretty awesome. Sarah, Sarah Silverman. Silverman. Yeah, yeah, she's good. She's got good stuff. Yeah. See, she's on Twitter, and Twitter's a great way you can reach out. I've reached out to a couple people, yeah. And that's yeah, it's it's the only platform where you can kind of do that. Someone that maybe, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's a lot more accessible. You can't do that on necessarily yeah. on Instagram, right? So, yeah, it's a yeah. tool. Yeah, that's what, it, what is. it is. You know, there's it's just a lot so of crack there too, but it's just you know, it's yeah, you make it work for you. Everything is social media based these days, right? Back it's kind of empowering, though, because it used to be, you know, if you're an artist, you need to get some type of management or label or mm-hmm. someone to represent you. And now it's like, we represent, can do it ourselves. Yeah, you do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Which okay. is also intimidating, but, yeah. you know, yeah. the flip side is, hey, yeah, I can. Right. I'm looking forward to you building your empire further. Thank you. Because you it's already happen. you wanted to be uh, a Playboy bunny, and you are a Playboy bunny. And I bunny. did that. Yeah. And uh, let's see what else did I do. I've done some done some short films. Now the con- stand up comedy thing. Oh, and hey, one thing we. I'm have- looking forward to when you just say my my stand up. My stand up. Instead of saying the stand up comedy thing, because hey, that, okay, that's an indicator that it's just been a year. That's just staying. All right, I'm just turn it through shade. I'm just you know. my. I have to have confidence. My stand up comedy, my joke. Well, you know what? It's it'll come naturally. Just the more you do it, mm-hmm. and especially the shitty stuff that you endure mm-hmm. to get through it. Yeah. And then you're like, then it's kind of like. How you feel coming out of Detroit. You're like, right. okay, yeah. I fucking earned this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's my stand-up comedy. Exactly. You're not taking that fucking away from me, all right? All right. Because I, I bled for this, <laughs> you know? Yes. So. I came here with Esther. She was in the car with me. Oh, Esther came from uh, Detroit? Yeah, she's also from Detroit. Nice. Right on, Esther. Yeah. Esther's, I think, taking a nap She's right napping now. right now. Yeah. yeah. Esther's been awesome. You've been awesome, Melody. Thank you. Thank you you so were much. awesome. Thank you for uh, bearing with our, our audio technical difficulties. This is the third of three parts. Hopefully we didn't lose the, the first one. Oh, gosh. Hopefully we find it. If not... I feel like we got some yeah. a lot of good stuff covered in yeah. each of the three segments. I so think so, too. Hopefully this will all come together. But, uh, 
You are awesome. I'm glad that you're here in this town building your craft and Thank doing you. your thing. And I'm glad I'm glad to have you here. My well, we first met in a casino. We didn't even go into that. Oh did my we? gosh. All right, real quick. We got to we got to just <laughs> How did you meet me? Okay, so I was on a girls' trip. Met some of my girlfriends from Michigan in Las Vegas. We were in the Hooters Hotel and Casino, and I see this guy sitting at the bar playing blackjack. You're playing blackjack or poker? Oh, that's right. So you didn't even meet Lieutenant Frank. Until the next day. It was day. me as a civilian. You were a normal person. You oh, were you. Wow. You were Mark. And I went up to you and I said, you look just like Thomas Lennon from Reno 911. Oh my God. And you're like, but I am. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, and before we yep. lose it here, we're, we're going to cut it off here because this oh. thing's going to tell us we can't do it okay. anymore. But that was amazing. That was a good way to end. Yes. Thank you, Melanie. And thank we'll you. We'll do a better episode in the future. Okay? All right. I'm going to get my sound stuff figured Let's out. Let's do it. I can't wait. Oh, wasn't Melanie great? She's awesome. I, I'm looking forward to seeing how her comedy matures. And I hope, I hope again, I apologize to Melanie like I did in the interview. And I apologize again here. I was not intending to be in any way patronizing. Um, I was just trying to share with her about how, you know, uh, what I heard way back in the day when I first started, which has been a decade now, is that it takes you, on average, eight years as a comedian to really figure out and find your voice. Um, everybody has to go through it. And Melanie's only been doing this for a year, so I just I hope, you know, Melanie and everyone listening, you understand that's where I'm coming from. Because, you know, these days, I don't know, sometimes you catch one snippet that some, someone... God, I can't talk. Sorry, guys. It's late on a Friday night. This is late. I apologize, all right? You don't get the right words, and people get the wrong idea. Um, Melanie's awesome. I love her mojo. She's got some really specific uh, backstory, some experiences that we didn't get into in this particular conversation uh, that is a subject of her act. She gets very personal. She gets very vulnerable in her act, uh, which is amazing. I just, I'm looking forward to seeing how her, her act develops, and I wish the very best for her. Enormous respects. I, hope, I feel like I'm beating this horse to a bloody pulp. You guys understand, right? Thank you. All right. Hey, thanks to all our listeners across the globe. I see you, New York City, Warsaw, and Poland. Yeah. Mumbai, yeah, in India. And Zapopan and Mexico. Did I say that right? Come on, guys. Give me a break. All right. I hope I did. But, you know. Zapopan. Did I say that right? I, I need to find out where that is. That's awesome. Someone in Zapopan and Mexico is listening to this podcast. Thank you, sir. Muchas gracias, senor. O senorita. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you're, you know, a different, more interesting gender. I don't know, but I'm grateful nonetheless. You mystery listener, you in Zapopan and Mexico. Hey, are you a hero tier? Read my article about the hero tears on medium it's called finding shelter is a laughing matter we need 3,000 hero tears to bring Venka and will and their puppy andy home leave no human outside also only hero tears can enjoy cool perks like a chance to win groovy mark roman empire and other hero tier artist swag we've found 34 hero tiers since december who's next visit herotier.org to discover more and you can listen to the podcast here on apple podcasts don't forget to rate and review on apple podcasts thanks to those who already have it really helps the podcast grow give us uh, you know some street cred you know show the peeps we're legit and stuff 
You can hear it also on Mixcloud, Podbean, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, and YouTube as well. Michael, look into some other stuff. We might try to get on, what's the other one? Spotify. I got to look into Spotify, guys. We'll do that. Lots of stuff to do. Did I mention I don't have as an assistant? I don't have a staff. I don't have a PA. Okay, it's just me, Mark Roman, building this empire brick by brick. MarkRomanEmpire.com. Click listen for all your listening options. But you can watch it too. You can watch it on the YouTube. It's just going to be audio for the podcast. But we do have the videos of uh, the interview wraps. So check those out too. To avoid missing out on cool stuff, don't forget to join my mailing list if you haven't already. The Mark Roman Empire Census. Sometimes we have special deals and perks for podcast citizens. Become a citizen. Go on to uh, markromanempire.com and click Census. Twitter at the Mark Roman. Instagram at Mark Roman Empire for the podcast. At Vegas90210 for Lieutenant Frank and the other characters. Email your questions to me at romanpodmail at gmail.com. And I might answer them on the podcast, I'll be honest. I didn't check it this week. So if you're wondering why I haven't responded, patience, young Padawan, okay? And we'll get to it, all right? There's the coronavirus, okay? All right? I was supposed to be at the Razzie's red carpet tomorrow with Melanie. I messaged my buddy John D. Domenico, who does uh, um, the, he does Trump. He's like the best Trump impersonator ever. He actually encountered Alec Baldwin, and Alec was raving. I think I talked about this on the last podcast. Anyway, Johnny D. flew in, was supposed to do the Razzie's, and then he found out this morning. No, nope, canceled, and they had to fly back to Vegas. So... Yeah, I was going to interview John tonight. We were looking forward to that, but, you know, it's the times we're in, kids. we got to learn to roll with the punches and adapt. Can we do that? I think we can. The Eagle Scout in me tells me I can. I realize I could never serve in the military because since age 19, I've been a subversive on the FBI's subversives list. Thank you, mystery donors to a particular small college in the Midwest. I don't feel like being sued right now, and I lost the last one, so we'll not get specific. But I think some of you know what I'm talking about. All right? I'm doing my best. Until next week, guys, it takes a busker. Remember our fallen buskers, Clown Alan Monroe, Prince St. Paul, Christopher Dennis and Alexander Desser. That's right. Hollywood Iron Man. I got to talk more about him in future episodes. I'm still processing that. Hey, let's bring home Vink and Will at HeroTier.org. I am the Mark Roman.